Welcome to the first part of our video training series on writing grammars. Throughout this video series, we will look at how to write grammars for speech recognition applications, starting with basic principles and how to apply those principles as we write some sample grammars. This video will teach you about the basic components of a grammar, introduce you to the speech recognition grammar specification, and cover the basic syntax of grammar writing. Our previous video series, Speech Recognition 101, describes the fundamental purpose of grammars and should be viewed before moving on to this series. Lumenvox, like all major speech vendors, supports a standard grammar specification called the Speech Recognition Grammar Specification, or SRGS. It is a standard maintained by the World Wide Web Consortium, or W3C. Supporting SRGS means that the grammars you write for the Lumenvox ASR can be easily ported to other ASR technologies, and vice versa. SRGS defines two separate formats, the Augmented Bacchus NOR form, or ABNF, and an XML-based format called Grammar XML, or GRXML. ABNF will look familiar to anyone with experience writing in most programming languages, while GRXML should be familiar to anyone with experience in working with XML documents. Both ABNF and GRXML are fundamentally equivalent, meaning that all functionality in one format exists in the other. Which format you choose to build grammars in is largely a matter of personal preference. This video series will cover both formats, starting with ABNF. As you may remember from Speech Recognition 101, the purpose of a grammar is to define the words and phrases that a user can speak in any dialogue state. So when writing a grammar, we will need to list all of the words and phrases we want the application to recognize. A very simple grammar might just allow for two words, yes and no. Let's take a look at that grammar. As you can see, the grammar is essentially just a text document, sort of like the source code for an application. Like a programming language, it consists of a series of lines following a very rigid syntax. The first five lines make up the grammar's header, in that they provide basic information for the LumenVox grammar interpreter. You'll notice line 4 is blank. As in most programming languages, extra white space is ignored, so you can add tabs, blank lines, and spaces as needed to make your code legible. Not every piece of information is strictly required by LumenVox. For instance, the ASR will attempt to guess the language if none is specified, but it is good practice to always include each of these lines. The first line begins with the hash or pound sign and the characters A, B, N, F. This declares that the document is an A, B, N, F grammar. Following that, the value 1.0 indicates that the version of the SRGS specification that this grammar uses is version 1.0. Since that's the only version of SRGS at the moment, all ABNF grammars will include this. The last bit of information on the first line is UTF-8, which indicates the character encoding being used for this grammar. The character encoding is optional, but becomes important if you're using special characters outside the normal U.S. English ASCII character set. Note that the first line ends in a semicolon, as all lines in ABNF must. The second line uses the keyword language, followed by the language declaration of ENUS. Languages follow the standard format of a two-letter language code. Here, EN means English, then a hyphen, then a two-letter country code. US stands for the United States, meaning that this grammar is in US English. The language declaration is very important as it tells the LumenVox ASR which language is acoustic model to load. This affects how LumenVox expects words to be pronounced, so be sure to pick the correct language and country code in your grammar. The next line sets the grammar's mode as voice. The other possible mode is DTMF, which is useful when building telephone applications that support both speech and key presses at the same time. We'll talk more about DTMF grammars in a future video. A grammar for speech recognition will always use a mode of voice. The final line in the header is the root rule declaration. It uses the keyword root and then takes the name of a rule. Most of a grammar is made up of rules, 
organize statements that define the words and phrases users can speak. If you are familiar with programming languages, a rule is sort of like a function. It has a unique name, expects a specific type of input, and returns an output. The root rule is like the main or entry function in a program. The LumenVox Grammar Interpreter will start parsing the grammar from the root rule. In ABNF, all rules start with dollar signs. So in this case, we are telling the grammar interpreter to start parsing the grammar with the rule called yes-no. As it happens, the only rule in this grammar is yes-no. In ABNF, we declare rules like we might declare variables in other programming languages. We use the dollar sign, followed by the name of the rule, then the equal sign. After the equal sign, we list the words and phrases that can be spoken. Fundamentally, a rule is a series of words. If those words are detected by the ASR, then the rule is matched, and it can return output. If the grammar's root rule is matched, the grammar is matched, and the ASR can return a result for the application. In this case, our root rule consists of two words, yes and no. They are separated by vertical bar, or pipe which indicates the logical OR operator. This rule can be matched by the word yes or the word no. Note that the phrase yes, no would not match, since we are expecting only the word yes or only the word no. Like a programming language, grammars employ strict syntax and everything must be made explicit. Other words like yeah or nope would not match this rule. Because the yes-no rule is the root rule, the word yes or the word no will match the grammar and return a result. In this case, if a user says yes, the return from the ASR would be the word yes. In a future video, we'll look at how to control that return. But for now, we'll stick with getting back the raw text of what the user said. In the next part of the grammar writing video series, we will cover the syntax of writing rules in ABNF grammars. Grammars Part 2 and many other training videos are available online at developer.lumenvox.com, where you can also view our sample code and engage with other speech developers in our online community.